I am uh, Ekumudo Suren Singh Tiagi, retired in 1996 uh, as a fighter pilot. I, of course, my, I have a very humble background. My father though was in the army, but I basically belong to a farming family of West UP in Muzaffarnagar. And uh, I actually was uh, keen to join army because I knew only uh, the army, my exposure was to army. I never had uh, seen the aircraft or air force. And uh, when, uh, of course, I appeared and I was an army cadet and I was preparing to join IMA. Before that, I appeared for UPSC exam and qualified for uh, Air Force and their call came before the IMA call came. So I, instead of being an Army officer, I became an Air Force officer. I joined in 1963 and uh, passed out in 65 as a fighter pilot. And uh, thereafter, of course, I have a long career, retired in 1996 in December. Before that, I commanded two fighter squadron. I I'm qualified on all the fighter aircraft which Indian Air Force has except Su-30 and Tejas which have come now much after my retirement and also helicopters and uh, I commanded two air bases, I commanded two fighter squadron, I was part of uh, as they call them uh, principal director air defense for our country and that was 94, uh, principal director space application, also director in uh, inspections, Air Force examiner. I mean, it was a very interesting, very involving, very giving uh, career that I've had. What I learned, I could get a chance to pass it on to uh, the younger younger people. I was uh, over 20, just about 22 years and uh, I was a young pilot officer <laughs> that time. That used to be the first rank. Now it's not no more in the service. Now everyone passes out as flying officer. But in our time, we used to be pilot officer for one year. So it was just about when I was about to become flying officer that I participated in the 65 war. I really uh, didn't know. We didn't know. We were very young. We were doing our initial uh, uh, operational training. I was posted at Kalai Kunda near Kharagpur. And it was uh, 4th of uh, September uh, when suddenly uh, siren went for air raid. So all of us charged into bunkers and we were sitting in the bunkers when I got a message, somebody came and the NC came and tagged me, he said, Aapko sahab ne bula hai, flight commander sahab ne. And I was told that you get prepared, you have to move out, uh, just now aircraft is coming, you have to go to the west. So I went to my tents, which we used to live those days. I went to tent, packed a few things, my overall and a khaki uniform, skirt uniform we used to wear those days, cotton. Used to look very good. <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, I packed and came in an hour and hour and half when Dakota landed. I uh, hopped into the Dakota and we took off. And uh, then by evening, in fact, it was near night when we reached uh, uh, Delhi. And uh, thereafter, uh, uh, for the night, I went home. I said, because by this time I knew that I was uh, I was going to be participating in war somewhere, but where I had no idea. So I said, let me go and meet. Uh, mom and dad, so my mother ji or Pitaji se milne Meerut chala gaya, Meerut ka rehna toh Delhi se maa gaya, maa raat ne mila, subhi subhi Pitaji ne car mein bitha ke wapas chhod diya, din nikalne se pehle hume jo hai jahaz mein packet jahaz mein bitha ke aur uh, take off ho gaya, subhi subhi toh bade niche ja rahe the, hum log bade peed bade bade dikh rahe the, khidki mein toh humne pucha bhai ne niche kyun ja rahe the, kani isliye ke bas ladai unhi wali hai, toh radar From there we didn't know where we were going, but when we landed we got to know that we landed in Pathan Court. I was attached to a TAC, Tactical Air Center, which is uh, which support the Army Corps Headquarters mein base hote and they support the Army for air support, what the Army's requirement is for close air support we call it. So unke jo hamare commander the, Group Captain Banerjee, or uh, the uh, wing commander Basin, he was, he was known as famously known as Johnny Basin. He was first batch of mid-21, very famous flyer. He retired as vice chief. He brief kara aur fir mein batha ke hume road se we reached Jammu. By this time it was uh, night and uh, pe Kaluchak Jammu se pehle thi. Pe we were attached to number one corps and uh, they attached to one of the div. Six Mountain Day from there to Six Nine Mountain Brigade, 
and uh, by night, I think 7.38, we were put into a GL section's jeep uh, with the Captain Saab who was the GLO. Uh, and uh, we started driving. The whole convoy was moving very silently. I was wondering where we were going. I had no clue where we were going. And uh, we were on the way, we were handed over a, a pack in the newspaper which had puris and alus and I thought, I said, 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 I then we went and then we stopped at some place. Um, it was spread out to place and that was the rear line, the form up uh, uh, area. And the battalions with uh, six nine mountain brigade were three battalions participating in this offensive. One was uh, nine Kumau, uh, fourth Madras, and third Madras. All three in this area. Path me, I got to know next morning when we reached there was Maharaj Kill, a famous battle it was very well dug in and protected area by Pakistanis and they knew that we are coming so they had anticipated they had all the arms and uh, uh, requisite uh, logistics to ensure that they could sustain a defensive location for a long time but I must uh, mention here uh, or maybe a little later that at 11 dead 11 I remember the time when the core RT started opening and the whole horizon was lit up with the uh, explosions of artillery guns, heavy artillery guns, which were going over our head and you could hear the round go over you and then falling over about a kilometer ahead of us where the actual defensive position was there. Basically, that was the area to suppress their head and let our uh, troops move in to a location from where they could um, go into offensive charge. And after, I think, 15 or 17 minutes, the whole thing came to a halt. There was a silence of death, death of those swines who were sitting in the dug-in bunker, the Pakistanis, because that is the time our three Balton, three battalions went into war cry and you could hear those war cry. And, uh, and then, of course, the rounds being fired and uh, bullets, you could hear da 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 and it was something which uh, what you see in here or here in picture is really nothing when you actually experience it live. Not many of us have had a chance to and not many of us will have, I suppose. But our troops very uh, bravely launched the offensive. And when we say offensive, I know that most people are aware. But actually, when you go on an offensive against a defensive position is when your troops are standing. And they're charging onto the source of uh, fire. That means when they see the third or four, every fourth round is a tracer. So when they say fourth round, they can see three, they can't see. So they're seeing fourth round. So they know there is the enemy. So they charge onto that. Crawl, run, and then finally first they crawl and then at a certain point they get up and run last uh, 50, 70 meters. And that's the time the casualties take place. But that is where the armed forces stand out that I know that the bullet is coming. But I carry on and I capture the location, whatever location there are. And uh, there were signals assigned to each uh, battalion. We found after about two, two and a half hours, uh, we got the signal from 9 Kumau that they have achieved their uh, target, uh, their aim. Then other uh, third ka came. Fourth, of course, suffered very large casualties because they think they were very well dug in and was a difficult little target. So we lost a very large number of troops, including CO and many officers, a very large number of men. But by morning when the brigade finally moved into the location, Maharaj Ki, you, uh, you could see the injured and dead and all a whole lot of uh, people were all around, all around you. I mean, uh, even no picture can depict that reality, really. Because the people, uh, you know, in pain, they were suffering. You could hear their pain cry. Baki, the dead, they, they were lying, you know. And uh, uh, both enemy and, uh, of course, theirs were nearly 80-90% were totally slaughtered. 
rest had gone into the village and they had hidden themselves into this village maharaj ki so of course next morning uh, this was uh, what was the actual offensive and capture of maharaj ki then it took us two more days to neutralize the village and the people who were hiding in the village and finally the whole target was uh, taken over third madras uh, was uh, largely responsible fourth uh, madras and ninth kumau had drifted to a little further different location i mean with the brigade but uh, so maharaj ki was uh, held thereafter by third uh, third madras so that was actually the offensive so i really didn't know till the time the guns had started firing the uh, you know artillery guns had started firing till the time our own uh, offensive bullets were making the noise till the time the war cry i could hear till the time next morning i went in saw then i realized oh actually war is <laughs> on and the war is and we have won the first target of ours and we have captured the first location this was the 6th morning 6th september 1965